just for people who don't know, what was Jeff's role in the company? He was he was kind of like the new president. So Kirk Burroughs was kind of phasing out, phasing out, and Jeff was moving in as the president. Okay, you come in, yeah. you're in the company now. You got your desk, you got your phone. I, well, I didn't really get a desk. <laughs> Basically, Jeff walked around, and this was the old office. It was still 19th Street. 19th Street, mm -hmm. and there was a mail room. And in the mail room, there was three desks: Kibo, this desk, and then kind of like an intern desk. Mm -hmm. So Jeff walks around. There's nowhere for me to sit anywhere. He's like, "Oh yeah, yes, yeah, so you can sit here." So I'm sitting there. I'm like, "Great, I got a desk." And there was a phone, but they didn't tell me that the phone you could dial out, but no one could call in. <laughs> Don't ask me why. You literally like it's always busy. So I'd have to be dialing for dollars and saying, "Oh, page me, and I'll call you back." <laughs> for real. And so Tinker's in there, mm -hmm. and Mike B, mm -hmm. Kibo. So and, for people who don't yeah. know, these are early, early, you know, people who worked at Bad Boy. Well, they didn't really work. They hung out at Bad Boy. I say work, you should get a check for showing up. Like, they got free t-shirt swag and got to say they worked there. Um, and then so the next day, all of a sudden, this Rastafarian dude comes in, Groovy Lou, and he's like, yo, son, who are you? First of all, Biggie had just passed. so. There's surveillance outside the building. I'm the only white guy in there, and everyone thinks I'm a narc. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have no idea. Like They're like, who is this guy, and why is he here? And Jeff's new, so he's like, it's the old school and Jeff, and then me. Mm -hmm. And they think I'm either there to fix the one uh, copier or <laughs> computer, or I'm a narc. They're not sure how to figure me out. And Groovy's like, you're at my desk. And I'm like, he was like, who are you? And I told him, and he's like, all right, scoot over, I'll share it with you which was probably the greatest thing that happened to me because that's like on a Tuesday and then on Wednesday Groovy's on the phone with Arista like what do you mean I can't get money to shop for the artist for um, summer camp mm -hmm. remember that's when they had the whole lineup yeah. mm -hmm. and I'm like well what is it that you need he's like you know like the flyest Nike stuff and I'm like well just call Nike they have a, a promotion office in in LA where they send stuff to artists for like product placement it was like early stage product placement He's like, what's that? I don't know how to do that. And I go, let me make a phone call. So I get a hold of the girl, Nikita, that was ran uh, marketing at, at Nike. And fortunately, I kind of knew her. didn't know her great. But you know, when you say you work with Puffy, like that's a juice card to pull. I said, Nikita, if you could do me one favor in your life, I need you to send product for the artist for Summer Jam. And this is like on Wednesday or Thursday morning, Thursday morning. And so we needed it by Friday for the show Saturday. And she's like, oh, the, the, the thing's going to close in like two hours. You have their sizes. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. I'm like, Groovy, do you have everyone's sizes? He's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, how are you going to shop for them if you don't know their sizes? <laughs> so we just took a guess. We went through every artist. And then everyone started chiming in like, I'm size, I'm size. And they slow down. Let's start with the artists. We'll go from there. And so sure enough, like on Friday, like 14 huge boxes of free Nike shit came. And people lost their mind. It's amazing how crazy people will go for free stuff. They thought it was like they, they won the lottery. I'm like, I'm like, oh, this is easy. If they just like free shit, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, and you did it all day, and you did it very well. Yeah, so that came, and then so then I kind of think the word got to Puffy, like, oh, this guy came through with all that stuff. And then I'm like, oh, I'll call my guy at Adidas, and I'll get a bunch of stuff made for free. So the next week, you know, 100 boxes come, 500 branded bad boy jackets and another 1,000 T-shirts. And Puffy walks in, he's like, who the fuck ordered all this? And I'm like, I did. He goes, I ain't paying for it. You paying for it? I said, I'm not paying for it. He goes, I sure the fuck ain't paying for it. <laughs> and I go, none of us are paying for it. He goes, what do you mean? I go, I got my man from Adidas to send this and make it for us. It's great. To give to DJs and the artists. I'm like, it's product placement. It's good for their brand. It's good for us. We got great swag to give out. He's like, you got all this for free? I said, yeah. <laughs> and so then... Then uh, he said something to Jeff, he goes, oh, that white boy can hustle, huh? And he goes, yeah, I guess so. I mean, he just got a bunch of shit, so. But that wasn't paying my bills. Giving free stuff away was not putting any money in my pocket. It just gave me um, uh, the ability to walk around the office freely and not think that I was a narc. <laughs> <laughs> it also showed Puffy a value. Yeah, yeah. Showing them that you had a different hustle. You were yeah. bringing something to the table that nobody in the building, yeah. you know, had the ability to do. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. 
If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.